Hey there everyone. I wanted to make a follow-up video on the fried ESC uh, receiver combo video that I had previously made. And uh, the reason in part is because the Gladiator, the new V2, or actually any of the new SCX 24s that are coming out that have the V2 uh, includes the Gladiator, the Bronco, and some people have been finding the new V2 in some of the re-releases with like the JLU and whatnot. Either way, the blue labeled uh, ESC receiver combo will not work with any external ESCs. So just know that all of the previous video and this video apply to only the V1 ESC receiver combos. So sorry about that. That was some new information that was brought to light. Let's go into some other stuff though. So I just wanted to show some other stock ESCs and what had happened. Um, so you can see here, there was some smoking going on. Normally there's two chips on these. Uh, there's the one on the bottom and the one on the top. I believe these are the BECs. Um, and you can see the top one here fried on this one, the bottom one fried, and again on this one, the uh, the top one fried. So one thing to know about uh, if you're gonna use a fried ESC receiver uh, to power your new ESC, you still have to be careful that these chips will get hot. So if, uh, if there's any sort of connection happening in there and you give it throttle or reverse, the chips can heat up and that is a bad thing. You could uh, still catch on fire. And so you wanna be very careful when you're using a damaged uh, ESC uh, receiver combo. So what I've done on these, all of these actually, uh, since they've all fried, is I go ahead and I just cut out the two chips or the chip that fried. Uh, maybe realistically I should cut out both, so maybe we're going to do that on this one. I haven't actually used any of these in rigs with new ESCs. Uh, I've only used them uh, to make sure they work with the servos and the front and reverse and all that stuff. Uh, but the transmitter part of these totally works. Uh, just the ESC doesn't work at all. And again. There still could be current flowing through there, and so by removing the the bad BEC, or you know, if you, you really want to be, like I said, careful, to, you can remove the both of them. Um, but this one's obvious which one fried, and so you just want to make sure you remove the, the the burnt up chip and make sure none of the there's eight little connectors, four on each side. Make sure none of them are touching. You know, you can plug in your battery, test some servos in there, uh, hold the hold the board while you're doing it, and just kind of feel, make sure there's nothing getting hot on any of the chips while you're using forward, using reverse on a servo with a servo plugged in. Um, or you can even, if you still have the original motor uh, plug, leave a motor plugged in and it, you know, it'll still get warm. And uh, if that's the case, you need to cut it out. Cut out the cancer. So on this particular board, you can see it's still, still working, but we have no forward, no reverse. Okay, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold the board and I'm gonna feel and make sure there's nothing heating up. Now on this particular board, I happen to uh, already cut out the one BEC. Okay, so none of the chips feel like they're getting warm as I give it throttle. It's still plugged into the motor, we're getting no throttle, but again, no chips are getting warm. We broke that circuit by cutting out the fried BEC, so we should be good. Okay. Nothing, so again, just be careful, don't burn yourself because they get hot real fast if they're fried. Um, so I would recommend doing it without touching it first, make sure it's not getting red hot. Okay, make sure your battery is not getting warm. Again, do this all at your own risk. If you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it because it, it could be dangerous. Things could spark up, catch fire, batteries could swell, stuff like that. Just make sure nothing's getting hot. Um, I know I'm kind of dwelling on this, but again, it could potentially be dangerous, but I've never had an issue uh, other than the ESC frying and then the you know, flames coming up from the fried ESC initially. Uh, I unplug it, pull it out, pull the whole board out of the rig, uh, and then work on it there. Like I said, this one's already been done. I'm just double checking and I'm using it to show you guys, you know, we're not getting hot at all. Again, it's gonna be mainly those two chips. So we're good. So I also wanted to just show this portion real quick. Uh, make sure you test on any fried ESC, make sure you test that the throttle is servo side is still working because that's where you're gonna plug in your ESC, okay? And you can even check the third channel here. You can plug your front end servo in there, and then you can see the channel three is also still working. This is how you get rear wheel steering, by the way. We'll do a video on that soon. Uh, but it's as simple as that. So just as long as all your servo channels are still working, then your receiver side is good to go. And again, on this particular one, we went ahead and uh, I removed both chips since we're gonna be using, since you know, this is the first one. I just wanna make sure everything was clean, nothing was burnt up. This chip looked like it had a little bit of swelling in it or bubbling, you know, bubbling up or damage to the chip. So I pulled out both chips. You make sure that the, none of the solder is touching where you where you end up cutting the chip out. Um, sorry, it's not focusing very well, but you get my point. So just make sure it's clean. And then another thing that I will do a lot of times 
And I mentioned this in the other videos uh, about decasing, is I can formal coat the board. And so wherever you cut out chips, make sure you can formal coat those. You don't have to, but because I like to conformal coat the board for waterproofing, you just, you know, if you cut out the chip after you conformal coat it, you break the, the barrier. So I just reconformal coat that area uh, where the chips got cut out or any new soldering. If you ever do any new soldering, make sure you try to coat it again. So I hope that helps somebody out. I know a lot of people out there have fried these ESC combo receivers and um, think they're just trash, but you can salvage them and use them to some capacity, especially if you want to continue using the OEM uh, stock remote, you know, the transmitter, this is the way to do that essentially. And if you're finding these videos helpful, always be sure to like, subscribe, and do the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, maybe still give us a thumbs up. We appreciate all the comments. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and make one. Uh, get out there, smash your cars, bash your cars, but don't break the expensive parts.